Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Spartan. And I'm Pudgy. And today we're doing a Game of Thrones wrap up video. Today, we thought it would be a good idea, a little bit of a fun wrap up. Since Game of Thrones was one of the biggest shows we've ever done, it probably one of the most memorable experiences on the channel for a long time, if not forever. <laughs> and it really put the channel on the map and allowed us to meet so much of the community. We thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a wrap up video. We're gonna have a few segments in this video today. So we're gonna start with our ultimate love like hate list. And we've capped it at five each, which oh, is gonna be really which was really hard. So hard. And we haven't shared this with each other as well. So we'll start with that. And then we're gonna go to We'll wrap up our thoughts for all of Game of Thrones, including season eight, I think. Yeah, it's it's not gonna be because honestly, guys, we could be here for eight hours yeah. uh, digesting and, and discussing this. We've literally already done this with Kylie and Anne, just talking for hours <laughs> about Game of Thrones, and we only got through season eight. So not even. You're not even. So it's going to be an overall wrap-up. I mean, our thoughts are pretty much in each episode. So this is going to be just an overall wrap-up, how we felt in the end, sort of summarizing the journey, hopefully not too long. Yep. And then we will answer some of your questions from our Patreon community. Yep. So we reached out to the community, asked them some questions for after we finish the show. And Pudgy has collated a bunch of those that we will answer. So some of our lovely mods put together some of our predictions that Spider and I made over our Game of Thrones journey. So we're going to go through some of those and read them out to you guys and see what actually came true and what didn't. All right. So are you ready for our ultimate love like hate list? I'm ready to go. And we haven't shared this with each other as well. Just a reminder. So it is completely fresh. Now we've capped it at five, as I mentioned earlier. That is so hard. Ridiculously hard. Ridiculously hard. I was doing it. I mean, you guys know I struggle anyways. I was doing it and I'm like, oh, I had to do it like five times. Yeah, and we've also added, I added an honorable mentions list. Look, honestly, it could be super long because the thing is, there's so many characters we love. I could fill out 20 for each one if yeah. I had to. So honorable mentions are just some of the characters that probably we could have subbed into a like or a love list and missed out by a hair or just a, a decision, but yeah. they're, they're still quite up there. And even then, we're going to miss a bunch of great characters. Oh, yeah. Impossible to get them all. And off disclaimers, let's get into it. Well, I actually got one more disclaimer oh. because I'm just going to make this... Disclaimer here, so I can imagine something people are gonna are gonna nitpick on. I wanted to stay true to myself in this love like list, and so I'm pretty sure I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure that they're all males. Oh yeah, who cares? I yeah. think a lot of mine are too. Yeah, look, I picked who I related with the most. There were a lot of female characters I loved in this, but they didn't surpass some of the stronger male cast for me. Yeah, that's staying true to myself. Some people are gonna like it, so be it. But I was not willing to compromise. Yeah. My, me being genuine to who I connected with in the show. Everyone's going to connect to different characters. And that's the whole point of it. I think that's why, you know, there was such a big, amazing cast, amazing characters. And that's why so many people love the show. There was always someone that they could relate to. And I think for the most part, the males were done better wrapped up. Like a lot of the women, like... Yeah, a lot of wrap-ups. Arya had some good moments, but didn't wrap up as good as she, she could have. Sansa as well... She did some good I like things. Sansa's wrap up. Okay. It, it suited her, but it wasn't like, wow, it bumped her up, you know? And obviously we know how Danny ended and a lot of things like that. There's a lot going on. So my point is that I feel like had some of them wrapped up, some of them were close. You know, Marjorie was contender at one point. Some of them were close, but then they just sort of didn't make it. All right. Well. Let's go. Let's go. I'll let you do the honors first, Pudgy. <sighs> okay. Now, with my love list, I kind of went with people who I, like, missed and, you know, yeah. <laughs> Very insightful. <laughs> okay. So, Rob, this is in no particular order, by the way. So, my love list is Rob, John, Tyrion, Oberon, Danny. Okay. Interesting. It's your official love list. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, tomorrow that could, no, it won't change, but like, Look, I just. on a rewatch, yeah. I think a lot could change. Yeah. I've actually anticipated some for the rewatch and the way I've done it. And I'll explain that later. But my love list, I've got Jon Snow, mm -hmm. Varys. Yeah. Ned Stark. Yeah. Davos and Oberyn. Oh, so Drogo wasn't on it. Oh, shit. <laughs> I love that Drogo. 
The thing is, there's too many characters. I'm adding into my honorable mentions right now. <laughs> no, you can't do that. You've only got five. You have to stop someone else out. Oh, I will, I will, I will. No, no, I'm counting. Oh. I'm counting. <laughs> All right, like list. Okay, so my like list, this changed a lot of times. But Torment, The Hound, Aria, Igret, and Jacken. Okay, okay. I like that as a quite different. Yeah. So my like list is Tywin. Oh, yeah. Rob Stark. Okay. Tormund. Yep. Hound. And Tyrion. Okay. I mean, they're similar. There's some crossovers, yeah. All right. The hate good old list. hate list. I guarantee you, you don't have one of mine. <laughs> yeah, okay. I guarantee you, you don't have one of mine. All right. We'll see. Joffrey. Cersei. Ramsay. Walter Frey. Locke. Sir Meryn Trant. Okay, hang on, I've got to change mine. That, that was six, actually. <laughs> there was so many people. We'll allow it. I, uh, I've actually got to add, I've got to change one of mine because I missed oh, one. Uh, hang on. Hang on, hang I haven't on. announced it yet. Hang on, what happened to, what happened to a handful of episodes ago, the last, maybe the last or the second last Love Like Hate list, you said you can't be changing it during it. The difference is I just went, brr, done. Whereas when you change, it means it's another 10 minute spectacle. That's the difference. Okay. Yeah, I just said, actually, now I'm sorting something out. That's it. All uh, right, you hurry up, boy. Hate list. Go on. <laughs> Cersei. Yeah. Joffrey. Ramsay. Yeah. Walder Frey was who I added in because I forgot about that old snake. <laughs> and D and D, the directors. <laughs> now the reason being is not because of season eight alone. It's because although the ending could have been a bit better, mm -hmm. a lot better. <laughs> we'll get into that. This show should have been ten seasons long, and I feel like that pacing alone would have allowed the later seasons to be a lot better. Yeah. A lot more. And they rushed the project from what we've been told to go start a, a Star Wars project or something that they didn't even do. And that pisses me off because <laughs> they had a perfectly world and project happening and they should have just taken the time and 10 seasons would have been incredible to enjoy more. So they made it in my, I, I love them because they've made, you know, one of the best shows ever. But I also put on my hate list because that decision was very bad. Yeah. So the ultimate villains of the story. Yes. <laughs> Honorable mentions. So honorable mentions. I'm gonna go first with this one. So again, reminder. Actually, no, you go first. Okay. Reminder: This is not anyone who has passed away. It's more like who could we sub in and whatnot. And even then, there's like heaps more people. Yeah. So Barris, Littlefinger, Bron, Sammy or Samuel, as you guys know him, and Davos. Okay. Interesting. So Stannis. Oh, yeah. Mance Raider. Yeah, I knew you would. High Sparrow. A lot of people are not going <laughs> to like that, but my boy, hey, I respect the body of the Cersei, my man. <laughs> Honestly, he always made my love list. I was tossing up. No way. Yeah, dude, I actually enjoyed his presence in the story. I get it, Everyone I get hates it. him, but I enjoyed it. I don't think he's the morally just, you know, yeah. legend, but I, I enjoyed him. Daenerys. Oh. So you could sub her in. It's just it was hard. Yeah, I'll think I get about it. it. I get it. Elena. Yeah, uh, Elena should be on mine too. I got one more. How many do you have? Arya, Jack and Hagar, <laughs> Drogo, and Grey Worm. Uh, <laughs> I would have added all those people too. Yeah, I, but... Grey Worm's there for me. Elena for sure. Elena, yeah. Jack and Hagar has to be. He's, he's... Yeah, but Jack and was on my likely. Oh, okay, fair. Yeah. And look, while we're here, I'm going to break from Melody a little bit. We're going to talk about something because All right, let's go. honestly, Stannis honorable mentions, right? But the hang man could I just dropped my book. All right, no, go. I'm, I'm, I'm going for it now. All right, go. Stannis honorable mentions. The man could have been on my love list. Now I know a portion of you guys lose your mind if somebody loves Stannis and, oh my God, how can you love Stannis? Hate Cersei. Look, don't even get me started because they are so, so different. It's not even funny. One is a man of duty. One is a love of power. It's very different. But what I love Stannis because... His character, I think, has a lot of very honorable traits. He wasn't, you know, morally just the whole way through. He did a lot of horrible things. Like but, most characters. Yeah, but I could see the pain and suffer. He was dying inside while doing what he thought he had to for duty. And I think the deal breaker for him really was him burning Shireen. Now, I know we're not talking about the books, but that doesn't happen in the books. And I don't think it was consistent with his character. And I think that was one of the poor writing choices, uh, in my opinion, because... Yeah the fatherly protection that he showed in the earlier seasons for me does not demonstrate a man who would have done that. So I don't, 
really, you know, whatever. It could be my decision, but I don't base him off that act because yeah. I don't see him like that. I think that was a poor writing decision and everything prior, I see him as quite a man of duty who's prepared to risk everything. And he particularly shined for me in his interactions with Jon Snow and, and all of that. Yeah, so I still do appreciate his character. Yeah. In saying that, I also can appreciate, because I can already hear the comments, I can also appreciate Cersei's character. I don't like her, but I can definitely walk a mile in her She's shoes. a villain, right? Like, yeah. I like her in the story and I like her as a character in terms of what she brought to the table, but like... She pissed me off. Yeah. She freaking pissed me off, man. She made us hate her and she yeah. did a good job at that. I thought that was the point of villains, but I don't know, some of you guys seem to think otherwise. <laughs> Well, some people, like me, like villains as their favourite characters. Like, so you can like a villain. Yeah. But some people are genuinely mind-blown that I hate her. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, last I checked, I thought that was the point of most villains. If you yeah. love her, cool. But you were meant to you're love not a, her. You're not a villain type of person. Nah, I ain't about that. If you guys have been around the channel long enough, I'm not a villain. Anti-hero, yes. Villain, yeah, usually not really. Would you consider Cersei as an anti-hero? Nah. It's just complete snake. <laughs> All right. I know we already started, but let's get into our thoughts of the overall wrap up. Wrap up. Okay, I've actually got nothing prepared for this, so it was really no gonna neither. Be, really going to be off, just off the fly mm -hmm. thoughts. Well, Look. let's start at the obvious place. How it ended. Yes, I mean we went into this in a lot of depth in our finale reaction, so check yeah. that out if you're on the depth. But upon, now that we've cooled off, yeah. From it, upon further reflection, I think what we've both yeah. found talking is that we definitely can feel that season eight was the weakest. I think in the moment, the love for the characters in the world made it more enjoyable than it mm -hmm. probably would be a second time around. Yeah. I didn't despise it like some people do, but I also could notice the most in the whole Game of Thrones, the drop in quality. Yeah. I think we started to pick that up in the early episodes when we were saying, oh, like episode two, we were saying the goodbyes and sentimentality wasn't as meaningful as it could have been. Yeah. I mean, I'll get into where I felt like the drop-off okay. was, but... I'll, I'll cover my thoughts then. Episode 2, I noticed we were saying a lot of, a lot of stuff like that. Um, you know, John riding Daenerys' dragon just happened. We're like, mm. oh, is that it? Even episode 3, which we loved during, and I still think it's a really action-packed, awesome spectacle. But towards the end, and at, at, in the reaction, I probably didn't get into it as much because Pudgy was a bit worried that... You know what, made it like ruin the mood, like the, the epicness of it, whatever, in yeah. hindsight. But now we've both sort of come to agree. You can share your own thoughts on, on it. But as much as it was an awesome spectacle, I loved it. It was a bit underwhelming for the whole story of the White Walkers. Yeah. The way in which it wrapped up. The, you know, the White Walkers didn't play a huge role in that battle at all. It was mainly the Whites that fought. They had scenes like with the White Walkers holding ice spears and they never threw one at the dragon. John, I think there was one that was throwing at Danny and she just dodged it. Yeah, it just wasn't... They should have played a, played a much bigger part. The Night King and John never really had a proper face-off. No. And that's disappointing because that was foreshadowed so many yeah. times. All those stare-downs they had. Their face-off was literally just the Night King, I guess, cowarding out and just rising the undead. Yeah, so that was questionable... I would have liked to see Bran play a bigger role as well. Like, yeah. I thought Bran was going to somehow use some sort of walking abilities to hold the Night King off or even to maybe to get into his mind and see some of the pain the Night King went through as a human or, or something like that. That would have been like, wow, that was, you know, whereas Bran in the end was literally just bait. And I feel like that was really underwhelming climax to him being the Third Eye Raven, Three Eye Raven. Yeah, I mean, there were many inconsistencies with Bran, I feel like. Not many, but the biggest one was that. You know, he was saying he can't be king or warden of anything, yet... Then he was also suddenly expecting to be king. Yeah, he's like, why do you think I travelled so far? I'm like, what? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. So, little things like that. I mean, even Danny, you know, after riding the, the dragons with John, they were at that beautiful waterfall, and she's like, you know, we could just stay here. And I'm like, that's not in character for Danny. Like, Yeah, but then she was, like, losing her mind over not being queen. I'm like... yeah. And even, even Danny, like, riding a dragon with John and not making it, like, holy shit, like, he can ride a dragon. That's a big deal. Like, they kind of did a little nod to that, like, the tiniest one, but it was more made as a joke. Like, yeah. oh, you know, if he doesn't let you, then goodbye, Jon Snow. Like, it was nice knowing you. It should and have been a huge moment. Like, she should have really been, like, yeah. why does the dragon respond to you? Make, make a scene of it and, you know. I mean, they did build that up with, like, you know, how Rhaegal was like, 
up close with him and he was patting Regal and things no, like that. No, they built but... up John's connection with the dragon a little bit. They did not build up Danny's curiosity. No, exactly. She had a very small like look, but yeah. it was very, very rushed over. Yeah. Oh, Danny, as a character, should have been like, what's happening here? Because yeah. no one else could touch the dragons. Yeah, honestly, that's how I thought they were going to somehow find out and then like sneaky suspicion and then, you know, find out through Bran or something. I don't mind that Sammy told them or Sammy told John, but yeah. It would have, yeah, it would have been cool if they had more sus about it mm. before it happened. Yeah. I think it's better we just share our thoughts while we go through things. We've probably got thoughts on most things. Yeah, look, it's... Uh, it's going to be all over the place, guys. Place. We've got so many thoughts. So bear with us. So for me in particular, after season four, I did notice a little bit of a loss in quality just in the story writing and whatnot, but it was just like a feeling. It was just the fifth season felt different from the first four. But I absolutely loved every minute of it still, right? It started like declining, declining, but because of the characters and what they were going through, I was able to look past a lot of the big rocks that were, or I guess the little rocks that were kind of missing. And then, yeah, season eight was just pretty much a big miss. I mean, episode three of season eight was quite hyped, but there were a lot of holes in the story and things like that but again because it it made me feel a certain way i was able to look past these little yeah rocks. we loved watching it then the hindsight and the way it wrapped up i think was the bigger effect yeah probably should have been more than one episode as well even though it was a longer episode mm. i feel like it should have been almost like a three episode spectacle yeah. or, and really you i know, was expecting we were both expecting that remember how we said yeah look we'll get into that more i just think i want to add about the drop off mm-hmm for me, honestly, with, if I really look into it, maybe I can look for something. But without people, you know, in the comments constantly saying, this is when it drops off, yada, yada. Really, the first seven seasons for me were all top quality. I, I wouldn't have noticed, all, yeah. I wouldn't have noticed much change in, at all. Maybe if I really look for it, yeah, three and four, you know, really peaked. But for me, five, six, seven was still super enjoyable. Mm -hmm. In hindsight, the logic of seven started to go, you know, a bit yeah. sloppy too. And I can understand that. And it was probably a bit rushed. But I still, you know, thoroughly enjoyed it. And it still hit the mark for me for the most part. Eight was probably the one that I genuinely felt on my own accord that, yeah, a lot of a lot of misses here were happening. Yeah, yeah fair enough. I think a big point needs to be discussed. Mm -hmm. Arya defeating the Night King. Now, for me, yeah. for me, look, I didn't see it coming. I don't think it landed for what they were hoping for. I think they were hoping there was going to be some super unseen thing Having Arya's faceless men arc, there was no real tie into that being to the Night King. You know, it didn't make sense that she snuck past all the White Walkers and then this guy's the bringer of death. He's been so elusive, so strong, the Night King, and a simple drop of the knife and boom was enough. Yeah. Like, Look, I John, think it was too simple of a move to take him down for sure. Even to sneak, sneak up on him. Like, it just, yeah. just feels too... Too cheesy. When all the other white walkers were there. Yeah. And John should have had a role in that thing too, you know? Yes. Agreed. Not about it being a fairy tale, but they foreshadowed John, staring him down again and again. And then to not be involved in that climax, he was just sort of held back by a dragon the whole time. Like, yeah. A little bit, yeah, a bit of a miss. And Viserion, out of all people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all dragons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. I there's lots of things that were foreshadowed for Arya to do that. So I do really like that part of the story writing, you know, like Bran giving her the dagger and Melisandre saying, you know, she'll close many eyes, some being blue. Very on Darian saying alive for a purpose and being the wall that shields. Yeah, and I did like some of those, yeah. So I like all of that, but... I feel like it still could have happened in a similar way, like Arya do doing the final blow. But like you said, John should have been there. I feel like yeah. he should have played some kind of role. And I wanted more from the White Walkers. A lot more. I was I was anticipating these guys for ages. They literally didn't do anything. Like yeah, they know. just killed them all, including the Night King. It just yeah. felt yeah they should have played such a big role. And I think they should have been some of the ones to kill some of the main characters. I think yeah. as much as I had people dying, I think too many of our main cast survived as well, given this was meant to be the battle of battles. And it made it feel a little bit too of a easy, happy ending. Mm. You know, like, I mean, the, the battles that come after with Cersei almost brought more devastation than the battle with the, with the you know, White Walkers. And 
I feel like they just should have really left that presence like, wow, like, holy shit, we made it by the skin of our teeth, you know? Yeah. It just sort of felt like they pushed us into a corner big time. The stakes were super high and Ari out of nowhere, boom, boom, dead. And I was like, I, I can enjoy it yeah. if I really try, but I was like, hmm, it should have had more impact. Especially considering these guys were the first thing we saw in the show. Mm. They were the biggest theme, the biggest threat. You know, they just should have been a much bigger uh, event. Mm. What about the final episode? I mean, for me... Or do you want to go straight to the final or do you want to go to the second last one first? (laughs) Because the second last one was probably the worst one for us in the whole series. Yeah. It was just... When we got to the point where we didn't even feel too sad about people dying... I think there was only one point that I felt sad. And actually, maybe that was the finale. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I kept looking over at Pudgy. She wasn't even crying. And I was like, yeah, this isn't hitting. It just... A lot of things felt out of place. Like... Varys's death was such a waste. The way in which it was done, it was just like they wanted to get rid of him because Melisandre said that he would die. Not because yeah, true. Not because it was a really intricately written death. It was just sort of hey, we've got to we've got to kill him off. It's two episodes left, kind of thing. And there was no interaction between them. It was very much just like you know, I sentence you to die, and that was it. Like there was no, which I kind of get from her, but you know, yeah. And that episode overall, well, you've said some really good points. You want to talk about what you thought Danny should have delivered in the second last episode? Like with her perspective and stuff. Yeah, I feel like we saw Danny at the start of the episode and then, you know, we're on edge. We don't know if she's going to let loose onto civilians or if she was going to go to Cersei. I feel like well, what I was expecting was that she was going to go straight to the Red Keep after, you know, taking down all those turrets and then have a one-on-one with Cersei like that would have been absolute perfection at least speak with her but we didn't get that and then out of nowhere she starts raining hell on all the civilians in the red oh well in King's Landing and we don't see her It, it was too sudden and then we don't see Danny at all we just see dragon fire everywhere it would have been nice to get a close-up on Danny and really see and really feel what she's feeling in that moment why did she make this decision that would have been I think part of the make or break for me yeah and I think just cramming only six episodes in season eight Daenerys's slow demise to sort of becoming the mad queen just happened so suddenly, you know, you'll see in the reactions, I was sort of not really buying it or yeah. absorb, like digesting it because we went from, you know, her seeming like quite a nice, loving character to be in John's life and come to the North to help in the fight. And, you know, I, I really admired her and like many of her traits. And then they defeat the biggest threat ever. And all of a sudden she starts losing her shit again. Like, yeah. I'm like, dude, not even a minute wasted of celebration. Like she just, and then really quickly within two episodes, just gone to shit. Yeah. So for me, I was like, what? For me, I, I do get why she broke. Like, if you put yourself in her shoes, you really do see that she just wants love. That's what she's pretty much been searching for. And she's not really getting it in the form that she wants. So I do see why she broke. And obviously, there's a long reign of Targaryens losing the plot. I feel like they just wanted to add that in there as well. But at the same time, I don't know that it was done in the best way. Like it could still have happened that way. Like I'm all for it, but it wasn't built up enough. It wasn't, I don't know. It was just too in your face and that was it. Now with the finale, yeah, I think we tried our best to extract some of the symbolism and the yeah. themes in it. And I think there were enjoyable parts from that, which we can go into. We probably already have gone into our discussion anyway. Overall, as a finale for this show, you know, was it fulfilling? Did it hit the spot? Not necessarily, not really. <laughs> but it did in the sense that by le- having a bit of a sad ending, yeah, it left me thinking about it for a while. And I think that stayed true to Game of Thrones. Whether it nailed it or not, it left you thinking, damn, like, you know, I just feel like if it was done over a few more episodes, it would have hit better. You know what? I agree, but I also think that the happy moments of like, you know, now Tyrion being hand, I still wouldn't have minded happy moments, but just the way they did it, it's like, 
Two seconds ago, Bron was threatening to kill Jamie and Tyrion, then all of a sudden he's on the council and they're all playing happy families. I don't know. I feel like that didn't say true to Game of Thrones. It, it felt a bit like cheesy, almost like a yeah. floppier writing than we would expect. Yeah, like do you remember all those old series back in the day? How it was like a montage of like happy things like throughout the that's what it felt like, and that's not a Game of Thrones style kind of ending. <laughs> mm. Yeah, man. Oh, we need we needed those ten seasons. I know. I do like how you know, John wasn't king and he didn't amount to... For me, he amounted to bigger things in the sense of he always wanted to be free. I feel like... And he never wanted to be king. He never wanted to be king. Even though I really wanted him to be king of the North, I yeah. I respect that staying faithful to his character. Yeah. He went back to the wall, which was his original dream. Now there's no real threat. And I should have picked up on it because whatever happens to their direwolves happens to the character and Ghost went to live on. He went to go live at the wall free and I, was, I think I was glad they reunited. Yeah. So that was nice. I like that he was with Tormund as well. I was still torn because I guess it was the bittersweet victory. I felt like John had sacrificed so much. Yeah. You know, having to lose the love of his life, lose his kingdom and then even not necessarily be with his family. It was bittersweet, you know, but it does sort of, it is somewhat fitting for him, you know, getting to live with the free people. He did spend the most time there, live in the, yeah. you know, in the wall where he was most used to it and could probably have a pretty free life now because there's no real threats beyond the wall. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, it still left a bit of a bittersweet. I felt like he deserved better because of everything he'd sacrificed. But I guess yeah, that's sort sure, of a bit it. of realism in that. Mm. Danny's ending, I'm not going to lie, it kind of messed me up a little bit. Like, you follow her journey for eight seasons yeah. and oh, I didn't think she would end up like that. To be honest, I thought she'd have some jealousy issues and stuff, but the second last episode, we don't really see her that much. We see her a bit, but the last episode in particular, seeing her like that, I was just like, this, this is It isn't... was conflicting. Yeah. I'm like, is this really Danny? Like, mm. it was sad to just see that she lost herself. She lost herself in the darkness completely. Mm. And it was weird because for so long, look, I always saw, and in, in some ways it was foreshadowed not bad. I feel like as somebody who didn't necessarily love Danny the whole way through, one thing that would make me sometimes cautious about her was that she seemed to be more okay with killing people yeah. than I thought she should have given her background, her history, her status, you know, where she started from and, and just how sort of meek she was in the beginning, but she very quickly became okay with doing the tough yeah. words. I don't think John ever became as okay with killing people as Danny did. It's evidence in later seasons. I think so. So that was be but oh whatever. But then her advisor would often get her back on the right path. It was a fine line, but they get it. So I think that foreshadowed okay for her becoming the Mad Queen. And I think I can see the books going that way, but doing it better. But I still sort of eked me the just in a weird way when she was a beacon of light for so many. You know, she liberated the people of Slavers Bay, and then to see her at the end just be like anyone who I'm going to keep going because you know this is the, this is what it's like reporting the budging <laughs> that anyone who doesn't agree with their vision of the world, doesn't get to choose. Yeah. I was like, what the hell happened? Like all those moments with Barristan Selmy and yeah. with Jorah and, you know, all those growths, it just went all like that. Like, yes, you'll say yeah. she lost people. I get it. but She lost people. She lost her children. It was a lot. And I get it, but who didn't? Like, I know, I know. Who I didn't know. lose everyone in this show? So yeah. I'm not saying that I could talk with my position and say I wouldn't go mad if I lost everyone I love. No. But when contrast to a lot of characters in the show, everyone lost people and, you know, she went dark, man. Mm. I liked the symbolism a lot from that scene with her in the throne room, like throwback to Karth and all those visions and things like that. That was really done well. But I also like how Drogon was at the front before Jon walked in and kind of let him through. And it was kind of like a rite of passage, almost like he knew what he was going to do. And then I also liked how Danny touched the throne, but she never sat on it. That was really great symbolism. And then I really, really love how Drogon burnt the Iron Throne. I think that was really beautiful. If I was to think that, you know, he could speak, it would be like, you know, fuck, this thing killed my mother, killed my sibling. All for what? She's gone mad. I'd rather her just dead, lay to peace. And I think, you know, that's why he grabbed her and left. 
Yeah, I thought that was quite well done as well. I like that. Where do you think Drogon took Danny? As I've said, I, I, I think like old Valeria almost like back to where this all began it was almost poetic. Mm. I think some people have said that they think she he took her back to where she was born, uh, where she lived when she was a kid. Uh, yeah. Where was it? Pentos something. Yeah. But I think oh, I like to imagine that she went back to Old Valeria to lay rest. The reason why I like the tie-in and even thinking about going to Old Valeria is because it feels like, well, this is how I like to imagine it. It feels like, so Egon had this dream of the Long Night or related to the Long Night and that, you know, there was going to be a threat and he would have to vanquish it or, or, or you know, his dragons would be an important role in that. Something like that. I'm not super clear on that, but I, I think I get the base of it. The Targaryen dynasty was there to fight this threat beyond the walls, mm. which was the White Walkers, and it happened in two forms, in, in, in you know, Jon Snow and in Daenerys Targaryen, and they came together in the end against all the odds, and they defeated this final threat, and now their job is done. And so the pure-blooded Targaryen, you know, served their purpose, and now the, the, the race is done. It's almost like that race served their purpose, and that's the heroic sacrifice, and they're done. Yeah. The half-breed can sort of live out his days yeah, silly. just live out his days, you know, but they sort of, they got the throne for a purpose. They had to rule to protect the Seven Kingdoms against this threat. Yeah. They defeated them. Their dynasty is over. And then carry over to a new era now where Bran is king, which I somewhat like in the sense that it's definitely inconsistent, but because they kept saying somebody who doesn't want the throne should have it, and he would make very clear, he's the only other guy that would make clear next to John that, I don't want anything to do with ruling. I don't want to rule the Starks. I don't want to rule anything. Mm. Then him being given it. And I can almost buy into it because he, I don't really see him as Bran. I see him as everyone. And so if yeah. he, he's probably the one person who can be very objective. It's like, well, I don't want the throne, but I've looked at all the history and I could see this coming. And if that's what's best for the realm, I can do that. I still don't want it, but I will do it because he's not Bran. He's sort of everyone. He's a collective memories of everyone in Westeros's efforts to try and overcome yeah. their their hardships, you know? I don't know how I got that. <laughs> yeah, dude, you pissed me off. I remember at the beginning of episode eight, I was careful because you said... Oh, you mean Bran season might... eight? Episode eight of season eight. Oh, episode six, season eight. <laughs> you mentioned that and I was like, honestly, I wanted I to absolutely... Episode five, yeah. Point is, <laughs> I wanted to bury you. And I thought, I'm going to be cautious here because it's one of those, you have a tendency, you can do some wild takes sometimes and they end up playing out. And I'm like, I'll hold back. I think I still gave you a bit of shit, but I held off. I wanted to absolutely bury you. I was going to say, that's ridiculous, stupid as a decision. And somehow it paid off. I could not believe it, dude. I was like, there's no freaking way that wild ass guest somehow ended up being right. <laughs> this is what I mean. Some of you guys don't realize, like, Pudgy is very pretentious about spoilers, a lot more than anyone I've met. But well, she, now also, you know why. she also has a, has a stupidly curious mind sometimes where I could say, like, oh, your jumper's blue. It should be like blue. Wait, the White Walkers are blue. Does that mean they're going to be the final threat? Like, just that's, that's how her brain works. Some stupid shit like that. And it wouldn't logically make sense that she got there, but she'd end up somewhere that's right. And then you'd be like, what the hell, man? So <laughs> so some people have a hard time believing it's Pudgy's first watch through, but that's actually just how her brain works in series. It's, yeah, uh, it's sick. It's a sickness. Sick brain, yeah. It's a sickness. All right. So final rating out of 10 for the show overall. Okay, I would say nine and a half. That's what I would give. <laughs> nine, I feel like is too harsh. That's where my brain. That's what I was like tossing up between. But I think nine and a half. Like most of it was really done well, and I've never had a s series that I've watched like this ever before in my life. So that's why nine and a half, not ten, because it didn't end perfectly, but pretty close. How about you? Like you're struggling for fucking oxygen. You're like, <laughs> yeah. you're trying to like swallow it. Like, uh. So I had the exact same number in my head. I okay. want to give this a 10 so bad because I don't think I've ever watched a series quite like it. It's an absolute masterpiece. Uh, it just didn't end strong enough for me as well. But it is still an absolute brilliant series and I am super excited for us to rewatch eventually. Oh, in our so own time. excited. It's going to be very fun. We got the Blu-ray. Oh, go get it. Okay, Let's get it. Show the people. When we say we, is your boy Spartan. Your boy Spartan was like, we're going to get... Who's on it? Yeah, we both paid for it, but we were like, I, I was pushing for this. I'm like, Pudgy, we got to get it. Because I'm a man of liking to own things. Let me hold my baby. Let me hold my baby. Ah, oh, look <laughs> at this. 
Look at this. <laughs> Game of Thrones 4K, the complete collection. I just thought it was beautiful. It also, this comes off. So, you know, it's sort of a box. There's the 4Ks there and it's got the Blu-ray with all the, what does the Blu-ray have? Because it's got like all the extra content, which we're going to rewatch when we rewatch it. Oh, yeah. We're going to do it thorough. It's got... Anatomy of a scene, so a lot of like how the scenes were set up, like planning a royal wedding, and that's that's a pudgy kind of thing to watch. Yeah, the massacre of Hard Home. I normally don't watch that stuff, but I think for this it'll be worth it. And this too is it's got all the behind the scenes, um, inside the visual effects and deleted scenes. Ooh, <laughs> we've also got a lot of the histories and lore here as well, mm -hmm. which we've watched, but we're gonna I'll go through them properly, and then. Disc three, Conquest and Rebellion, an animated history of the Seven Kingdoms. Maybe that's the history of the law. Anyway, it's got a lot of bonus features, which is cool. That's in Blu-ray. The rest is in 4K. And honestly, I love it. I think that's Drogon on the front, but it's just like I can sort of... I don't have the camera on the mode where it focuses. I wish I had it on that mode, but it's you guys can see clear enough there. It's just real nice. Like... Oh, man. And it's got Drakari's on the, on the side, oh, too. Oh, that's pretty cool. Which I think is awesome. And then there's the 4K. Yeah, I'm really proud of these. This is the, I think this is the first proper series I've owned. I've, I started collecting movies the last couple of years. This is the first proper series I've owned. So this is my baby. No, no, not you. We. It's mine, but you can borrow it sometimes. <laughs> it's my baby, then. Take it away from me. <laughs> now, you got to be careful because... I know this thing. <laughs> Wait, I know this. Hang on, I got it. Got it. I know this thing. You don't really need it, but I like it. It's yeah. Extra little cover. It keeps it all together. <laughs> <To> protect. <laughs> and what about me? No, you're gonna want me. See, I'm gonna have it sitting here. You can hang out with us for the rest the of the video. The mic is in its doorway. Yeah, they can see it in the background. They can see it. Well, put it for the back. <laughs> yeah, with those, you better sponsor us after this now. <laughs> it's right here. All right, our baby's there. Okay, so our Patreon community sent through a lot of questions, some of your burning questions, and we're going to answer them today. Okay, so Dashawan Brooks, what's something you wish? That's Sean. Oh. <laughs> we're going to butcher a lot of names, guys. Just bear with us. Dashawn Brooks, what's something you wish had been expanded on more? Plot, characters, location, piece of lore. This is a very hard question. Mm. Uh, I definitely would say the faceless men. I felt yeah. it could have been expanded a lot more. Danny's descent to be being a mad queen, I think, mm. could have been explored a lot more as well. I think so too. I think that's a really big one. Characters like Littlefinger could have been ex and Barris could have been explored a little more. I mean, we did explore them quite a bit, and we got a lot of conversations with them. But more personally, yeah, more personally. How about Oberyn? Yeah, Oberyn needed to... Oberyn was cut way too short. Even Tywin. I feel like Tywin was one of those where everyone loves him so much from the books. Mm. He's great in the show, but we don't actually learn a lot about him yeah. and why his status is that high. I think also the Hound and the Mountain. Like, their relationship, I feel like, should have been explored a little bit more, especially for the ending that they got. I feel like it would have been more impactful. Honestly, we could probably put the hundred characters on that list. Yeah. Like, there's so many that I'd be... Yeah. I'm interested in every character. So, I think... What about location? Oh, when we watched that video in our demigods here with the locations of the world, I mean, there's so much mm. in ASOS and even beyond Yeah, that so much interesting stuff there. So we could have done a whole other series on, on, on the world and what yeah. it's like. Arya is now going west of Westeros. Like, I just feel like the whole world could be explored. It's super intriguing what could be a part of this world. You could make so many spin-off series. Mm. Yeah. I feel like Dawn could have been explored a little bit more. Yep, fair enough. Well, if we're getting specific to Westeros, I'd say where the wildlings are. We we saw yeah. little tidbits, but we really didn't get to explore a lot of the yeah. tribes and what it's like and day where they live. Like, yeah, I would have liked to see more of the culture. Mm -hmm. Michael O'Neill, out of all of the things that were set up throughout the eight seasons, but were never given a proper payoff, which is the one you feel the most let down by never getting a resolution to? For example... John and the Night King constantly pointing at each other like, let's fucking go, bro. You, <laughs> me, 12 rounds for the fate of Westeros. Only for nah, bro, Arya got <laughs> That's a big one. I think you know my main one. That is a, a big one for me. Yeah. That one was pretty big. I think I'll also go with 
John riding a dragon was just, we got the payoff, but it was just very lackluster. Yeah, but that was also like the end of the series as well. It wasn't, yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, I'll say Stannis. Stannis's yeah. demise was just very tragically done. I feel like he deserved a lot better before he went out. Mance Raider as well. We finally got yeah. to know and love him. He's a big one. Apparently, he's not dead in the books. Um, he's actually working with Stannis. So I just felt like Mance's death amounted to nothing. I, I, I like what it stood for, but it didn't amount to anything. So I was sort of a bit like, it yeah. could have played a much bigger role. All these to just die. I feel like it was just in there for shock value. Yeah. I also feel like Tyrion's storyline... Yeah, it went down. I don't down. know. It went downhill. They really didn't do it properly. I see where they were going with it, but it, I don't think it was really done well. So that payoff for me wasn't as great. All I the mean, hype and build up to him being in his hand yeah. and then he just failed every single time. Yeah, I think, I think that was a big one for me, especially because he's always been in my love list. I'm, I think pretty much since day one. So yeah. yeah, that one was a bit of a, left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. I think the Three-Eyed Raven was one, to be honest, yes. because it's sort of like his main purpose was to tell John that he was a Targaryen. But other than that, he didn't really contribute mm. a whole lot and he didn't play as big of a role as I would have liked in the Battle of the White Walkers. It felt yeah. lackluster in the end. Well, I think the elephant in the room, the biggest one is the White Walkers. We saw it in the first scene of, you know, season one and then to be done in 8-3 and... I don't know, it wasn't a satisfying ending. I think that's a big one. Yep. I'll also say, because we're talking about payoffs, Cersei's death, I, you guys know I wanted this since the moment I laid eyes on her, <laughs> but the way it was done, it's like they almost tried to get a bit of a poetic, romantic yeah. thing in the end. It just didn't really, didn't really hit home for me. I just felt yeah. like it should have, given some of the deaths really, you're like, wow, Cersei should have really hit and it didn't. Yeah, Jamie's character arc, I think it was done beautifully, to be fair, but I also think that the payoff for me wasn't entirely there. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Lady Admin 420, what is your favourite battle of the series and why? What is your favourite sword fight? And last one, who is your favourite brother of the Night's Watch, other than John? Okay. Favourite brother of the Night's Watch, I'm going to start with that one. Yep. We'll do, we'll do that one each. Go on. Oh. <sighs> Honestly, it's I kind of fucking that up because I don't remember his name, but it was the one that Grand. went out. Gren. It was the one that went out fighting the giant. He was just so loyal to John, and that was, that was such a heroic effort. And that one really lasted with me. I agree with that, but I have to say, Sammy. I knew you were going to say that. It's fair. Favorite battle of the series. That's a hard one, oh, but I, I think have... I know. Oh. Honestly, it's there are some really good ones, but I think I have to go Battle of the Bastards. Me too. <laughs> it just man, I didn't breathe in that one. Yeah. And and it was executed the, the uh, there was nothing left unturned for the payoff, other than maybe the fact that Theon wasn't there. Yes. There was nothing else missing for me. That's what makes it so much yeah. just perfection. Agreed. Favorite sword fight. Oh, the one that left probably the biggest impact, which I guess, yeah. It is a sword fight. Sirio. Remember Sirio when he was teaching Arya and then... It, yeah, we didn't um, really see that sword fight, but you still... Yeah. Okay. Because of the... Trust me to pick the one we didn't see. We saw a little bit of him trying to like... To, oh, no, we didn't. Anyways, that I think that one was like... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I was going to say... Get, I get what the question's asking me, but I think that left like the biggest impact. <laughs> It's hard because I have to sit down and think about there were so many good ones. Yeah. I think I'd have to say the Battle of Hard Home where John defeats the White Walker. Because mm -hmm. the first time I saw a White Walker get killed and, you know, John of all people, I think that was just sick. I obviously love John as well. So I think that's one of my favorites. I think Oberon's one. Oh, yeah. That I one. think Oberon's one, actually. Oberon with the mountain. That one's pretty yeah, that, that one's flat that was as well. Cool. That was pretty cool. I, he didn't really use a sword, but. Yeah. Yeah, that one slaps. HDN, no brainer. What would be an alternate ending you would better prefer? All right. I've already discussed it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you want to start with this one? You go. I would have liked Bran to play a much bigger role mm -hmm. in the battle against the White Walkers. I would have liked some sort of warg ability to come into place and have an impact on the White Walkers on all yep. of that. I would have liked the White Walkers themselves to maybe fight a lot of our main cast and kill some of them. Yep, but that's not the ending. 
well, I, I treat that as part of the ending. <laughs> it's part of the ending. And I would have liked John and the Night King to have a big clash. That's, yes. that's ending. Agreed. I think... I'm not finished, by the way, oh, but oh, you can... Yeah, well, go well, that's a part one ending. Then I've got part two <laughs> okay, ending. Okay, you go part two ending. Part, part two ending. <laughs> I honestly would have liked John to be left as King of the North. I get it wasn't necessarily the, the way, but I would have liked that. I would have liked more to have been done with the Lord of Light. I think the Lord of Light, I would have liked... No, no, no. That's not the question. Yeah, what would an alternate ending? I'm saying in the end. <laughs> How would you have liked the series to end, you silly boy? I know what you're going to say. You have that in your word. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of cooked my brain a bit. Like, All right, budget. do you want me to say Can you cancel everything? Yeah, go for it. You cook my response. Mine, I don't have, like, a particular thing for each character. It's more just the overall feeling. I feel like Game of Thrones would have suited a more tragic ending rather than, like, um, a montage of happy moments and how they kind of are dealing with things afterwards. I, f I feel like I would have liked that a bit, but I feel like a more tragic ending and a, um, a cliffhanger ending would have been perfect for Game of Thrones. That's what I think. Okay. I'm going to leave my answer as is because okay. probably something that needs more thought and uh, maybe we can chat about it in a live stream at some point. Okay, so Tiago, Tiago Rosa, which house do you think has the most potential to win the Game of Thrones and which one do you think played it better? You can start off. I don't, that's hard. Um, I think the house that had the most potential. I feel like the Tyrells had the most potential. Yeah, that's a good answer. And I think the Starks played it better in the end. Yes, I, I agree a lot with that. I think who played it the best? I think the Tyrells were very close, but I have to give it to the Lannisters. Mm -hmm, not true. the next generation. The the kids sucked. Yeah. They were horrendous. But Cersei, Tywin, Tyrion, and... Jamie. Somewhat Jamie. Uh, it'd be less Jamie, but somewhat Jamie. Um, but mainly those first three, I think they played it really well. Probably the best we've seen, especially in the first handful of seasons. I think they really stood out. But the Tyrells, I agree with your answer about the Tyrells as well. So you've kind of already answered this, but it's on a scale of one to ten. So Jonathan Nees. Yep. On asked. a scale of one to ten, how satisfied is Spartan with how Cersei finally went out? One to ten. Yeah, I don't know. Look, I'm glad she died, but I have to give it like a four or something because I just could have been done so much better. Yeah, like she was a bit sad at the end and, you know, I almost felt a little bit sorry for her even though I didn't allow myself to. Mm. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know what I exactly wanted, but I did want it to feel a lot more. I think I wanted more interpersonal because it was her relationship to characters. Had John and Danny been there and they'd squared off and there was a discussion and a bit of vulnerability thrown into it and maybe her breaking down why she'd been so cruel and something like that could have been more poetic. Maybe even Tyrion been there in the end. Something like that could have been done better, I feel, than what was the, the way it was done. It was sort of just done alone and you didn't really get to see, because I want to see yeah. the other characters' reactions to that. You know? Yeah, true. So, Cam, I'm curious to know, out of all the characters, now that you know their fates, whose arc, beginning to end, is your favourite and least favourite? Oh, My John, for me. John slaps. Favourite? Character? Yeah. Yeah, John's was the most fulfilling, for sure, for me. Yeah, I think John's was one of my favourites. Although I did like Arya's arc as well. Um, but the ending wasn't as satisfied. Like, I didn't mind it. Hounds was up there, too, in many ways. The yeah. Hounds really, like, yeah, surprised me. Yeah, that's true. My least favourite? For me, it would have to be... <sighs> I had someone in my mind, but now I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, so did I. What happened to my memory? <laughs> Stannis is one, for me. I think I loved his arc, the way it was building up. I loved how it sort of peaked at season five, and then he just turned to shit towards the end of season five. It just felt... So abrupt. Mm. And I think I'd say a similar one with Danny's. I, I loved hers for seven seasons. And then it was just abruptly wasted away. And I just felt like, I don't know. I felt like it, it was a bit of a miss for me or a bit of a false promise. I think bronze was my least favorite. Yeah. I, I don't think it was handled well at all. No, nah, they got lost. He was in the from season one or two. I like his fate. I don't like how we got there. Yeah. 
I mean, fate is an interesting word too because I love John's character arc by far and the way till the end it was epic, but then where he ended up with the wildlings, you know, without his family and and most of his friends, that fate for me is a little bit, I don't know. Yeah, look, uh, none are going to be perfect. Yeah. Ruined X, what characters surprised you the most with the way the character arcs turned out? Danny was a big surprise. Danny, agreed. Rob and Oberon were massive surprises. Ned. Ned. Yeah, <laughs> Hound. Yeah, true, the Hound. Yeah, especially you. You hated the Hound. Yeah. I know, and then I started loving him. Yeah. Joffrey and, and Cersei, like, I didn't think Cersei would last so long, and I didn't think Joffrey would die so soon. Yeah, okay, fair. Um, I've got to say the High Sparrow. Okay. I didn't think he was going to go out like that. And I didn't think he'd go out like that, but I didn't think he'd stay around for too long. Almost the biggest one I say is John. I honestly thought in season one he was just going to be one of the side True. brothers, not, you know, he'd be like a, a side man, but I never thought he'd be the main deal and literally represent fire and ice in the end. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. Oh, and yeah. Hodor. Hodor. That was big, dude. The way he ended up being so pivotal. I, that one surprised me a lot, and I love that so much. Yeah. Erica Bade. If you could wake up one character that has died so they can see or know something they never got to find out, see who would it be. For example, I'd love for Tywin to know his little cupbearer was Arya Stark and see what a badass she turned into. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, this is a very good question. I mean, very generic, but I think I would have loved if Ned Stark in the yeah. end could have seen what his children did for the realm. That's actually a really nice one. So now that you've covered that... I'm going to say Rob. I think it would have been really nice to see that, you know, he saw his siblings, he saw his family, everything that he was fighting for kind of came into fruition because he was stressed. My man was stressed. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could see more of Rob and John together. Yeah. That would have been a, a cool combination. Uh, yeah. I want him to see Rob. I think that is a person that I'd want him to see, John and Rob. Amber Mary, if you had to live through one of the character storylines, which character would you choose and why? I already know. Yours. <laughs> yeah, look, can't go past the Jon Snow. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a rough storyline, but the man bosses it. So I'd go Jon Snow. Um, this one's a hard one for me. You can be Talisa and just go out in season three. To be fair, I was thinking Talisa because of Rob. There's no way you go out, dude. Be depressing. Yeah, nah, that that whew, too much trauma for me. Look, I'm gonna have to say Danny, although I don't like post her going like hella crazy. I think, yeah. So like pre her going hella crazy. Yeah. Post means after. Oh, pre. <laughs> That's what I meant. Daniel Sigil, Sigel, I think. I'd like to see a kind of awards show segment. Possible categories. All right, we'll run through them. All right, best actor. Best actor. Oh, man. <laughs> you have one? Best actor is... Oh, no. But, Jack and Jack and had to be up there. Yeah, yeah. Award implies one, but it's hard for me. I'd have to say... Look, I have to give the villains, like Joffrey and Ramsay, I despise mm. them and they did that really well. True. So they're up there. Oberon is, is up no, there. No, one, one, one. No, no, paying the contenders. Okay. And then we can decide. Okay. Oberon's up there. Yep. Jacken's up there. Tywin's up there. In terms of the absolute, they're all great actors. Yeah, they are. In terms of the absolute top, Varys and Littlefinger. Mm. God damn. If I had to give it to one person... That's so hard. Do you have one? Oh, I don't know, man. This is too hard. I do. All right. We'll just say one. Uh, we think a lot. But one, I'm just going to stick with Jacken. I'm just going to go with Oberon. That's one that stood out with me. Oh, Oberon. <laughs> yeah, actually, <laughs> no, mine's no, no, Oberon. No. Can't mine's Oberon. Mine's Oberon, yeah. Best actress. Yeah. I mean, Cersei did a freaking good job because I yeah, despised her did. from start to finish. I'll give it to Cersei. Yeah, Cersei. Best supporting actor. Ooh. Sammy or Pod? Sammy. Sammy. Hound? 
Yeah, I guess he's a supporting. Actor. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just keeping that. There's uh, something like that. I'll give everyone. Best supporting actress. Can you consider Elena a supporting actress? Because she's sort of like a side. Yeah. I would say Elena. I'll say Elena. Most I, exciting. I gotta, get, I gotta get a supporting actor. I gotta get oh. one. I haven't done one, but I gotta. Davos. Davos. <laughs> well, that was like. Yeah, he's my man. And Tor- Tormund was pretty good too. Yeah. Oh. Um, most exciting scene. Battle of the Bastards. That's the whole episode. My scene. my most exciting scene was probably <laughs> it's ironic, isn't it? But it was when Talissa was telling Rob that they would call <laughs> call their baby Ned. That did not last long. <laughs> no. Most exciting scene. I think it was when John was making that final charge against Ramsey. I was so hyped. Oh yeah. I was so hyped. Man. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. Most disturbing scene, I think, has to be Ramsey. Oh, yeah. What were you going to say? Ramsey with Theon. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's pretty disturbing. And so was Oberyn's head being crushed. They were disturbing. I think Red Wedding for me was shocking and, like, sad. Disturbing was Ramsey with Theon. I don't know, man. Yeah, Red Wedding messed me up. We didn't. If we saw more on screen of Ramsey and Theon, maybe, Mm. I think I'll give Red Wedding because that's just... Could not believe what And happened. I think the other second most disturbing one is Sammy changing the chamber pots. <laughs> that was disgusting. Oh, oh dude, what what was that? <laughs> so we already answered this. Best, Best battle, battle, we battle of the it. bastards. Yeah. Best dynamic duo. Oh man, there's so many good I ones. I know. It has to be for me between Arya and Hound mm. and Jamie and Brienne. But then you got Sammy and Joe. Oh, no, nah, they're probably not as iconic. I wouldn't give it to them. Yeah, one of those two. Yeah, I agree. That one has to be a top two. They're tied. <laughs> Best dialogue scene. My two favourites that I can think of cussed my head. One is when Tywin stood up to Joffrey on the throne and he walked his way up and he uh, just threw yeah, him up. Yeah, that yeah. was nice. He's giving me history a lesson. That was intense. Joffrey was like, what the mm-hmm. hell? Actually, I'm going to add a third. <laughs> The second one was when Oberyn gave that speech to Tyrion. Yeah. Like, I will be your champion, the way he built up the story. That's probably one of my favourites. And the third was, I loved when Jon refused to bend the knee to Danny okay. because he just sort of represented Mance's legacy. Everything he yeah. worked towards, everything building up to it too, that you know, we don't have time for this, this isn't the real threat. The way he just held the line, that whole speech, those were three of my faves. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, the second one, I think for me was like, you know, over and with the champion speech. And I think also saying goodbye to so many characters in season eight, episode four at the start there, when John was making his little speech, I, I think it was literally just saying like using the night's watch, um, oath. And I, that was just impactful for me. That wasn't so much dialogue, but more a speech. Oh, you know what? Maybe lady Mormont, one of her, like, she was pretty iconic. Yeah, yeah. One yeah. of her speeches, like, because she was epic. Let me hide this because my man's going to... Our dog is scratching at the door, so I'm going to let him in. You guys can meet him. We'd love to have him in more reactions, but then he'd always want to run out. Come here. Okay. See you later. on. <laughs> Good boy. You rest. Oh, I know he's come to play. You rest. Good boy. Where, where to drop? Rest here. Hopefully he just sits there. We'll keep going. <laughs> if we get interrupted, we will see. Um, Worst mistake by the creators. Not making it 10 seasons. Yeah. Agreed? Agreed. Okay. Best use of music? Like, probably, like, what scene? Oh. Look, Danny's music is pretty up there. Yeah. That and the Starks reunion kind of music. Mm-hmm. Those two would just... I've been listening to them on Spotify. I've been playing them in yeah. the car. And, oof, they slap. I think one of the best uses of it... I don't remember... It- Oh, okay. I've got more to say, but you go. I think it was um, The Unsullied when... In episode it, three. Yeah, that's one, eight, season eight. Yeah, yeah season yeah, eight, yeah, episode yeah. three, when they were getting ready, it was pitch black. No, was it coming. wasn't in episode three. It was in season seven. But we love... We'll, no, the one that we love, I'm like, oh my God, that one. It was like season... Remember the one that episode. was like... Um, yeah, that was that was. I'm pretty sure season seven, episode six or seven, something like that. 
Yeah, we, oof, that one. Yeah. Ooh, that was the, <laughs> some good, good, that was intense. Honestly, there was so much beautiful music, even in a, a lot of the major battles and scenes. I can't remember all of them. I haven't gone through them all yet. Yeah. Those are just some that come to mind. All right, okay. well, that's the end of so our that's a big question. ceremony. <laughs> yes. Yes, I hope you enjoyed the awards. So, Druckerberger TV, do you feel like accomplices in Danny's crime? That being when she was giving her massive speech to the Dothraki and she was saying, burn their stone houses down, all that kind of jazz, and then cut to the second last episode of the entire series and she's just burning civilians, burning their stone houses. She was pretty much doing everything that she said that she was going to do. I don't feel like an accomplice because I think I was very critical on Danny the whole way through. Mm -hmm. I tried to enjoy her story, what it was, and I had people at my throat the whole way through our reactions about my interpretations of Danny. And I always held the line and said that yeah. I didn't think she was as, as honourable and noble as other characters. And I thought she had the potential to go pretty dark at times, which always kept me weary. And in the end, I ended up being correct. So I definitely tried to enjoy her character for as the most part, but no, I don't feel like an accomplice. Yeah, I don't really feel like an accomplice because in that moment, I felt like what she meant was not what she did in the end. You know, I think that speech was to hype them up and things like that, but I don't think she wanted to kill innocent people I, at that point in time. So not really an accomplice, no. Um, but you said at the beginning, would you still defend Danny's behavior and actions up until 8.5? I don't think I've defended her behavior actions at all very much. <laughs> like, um, I've tried to see from the, her from the perspective of what everyone's love for her was at times, but for the most part, I've been critical on her, so I don't... I don't know why that's directed at me, particularly if anything, I've defended her the least. <laughs> Carl Lashkari has said he wants to hear my take on Danny's character and you feel that he was very different in season eight. You mean John, <laughs> not Danny. Yeah, So Carl Lashkari says he wants to hear Spartan's take on what they did to John's character. You personally feel that season eight John was very different to one to seven John and I strongly agree with this. Yeah. I think that they made him way too simpy for Danny and blonde by love and he lost sight of duty and honor till the end. It wasn't the John that we saw from season one to seven. And I agree. They definitely tarnished his character yeah. portrayal and development in eight. Yeah. Okay. So last question from Aileen Evangelista. Rank the seasons. Oof, that's hard. Okay. Maybe we'll just, can we rank them all? Well, eight would be last. Eight would be last. What were your best season? Three and four are like my top. Yeah. Mine would be between three, four, and six are up there. Yeah. Three, four, six, two. So maybe three, three four, four, six, six two. See, I would probably say seven ish. I really liked John in seven, but it's yeah. hard to know without a rewatch. Yeah. I did like the payoffs in seven. I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with that. So we are swapping two and seven? I think so. Yeah. It's hard for me to remember the earlier seasons with one, what I know now, too. So. Yeah. I don't know. And then one, then eight, I think. Something like that. Something like that. You get the favorites and the worst. Yeah. Okay, is that all the questions? That's all our questions. Thank you guys so much for sending all of those through. Yeah, we, we had hundreds. We summarized. A lot of them were similar. And we yeah. summarized the main ones. This video would be very long if we didn't. So <laughs> I mean, it's already extremely long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so these are a handful of the predictions that we made throughout Game of Thrones. Now, it's not all. It's only some. Some of the main ones. Some of the main ones. How about we should read each other's, I think. Okay. So you can read mine first since it's first on the list. Okay, so here are some of Spartan's predictions. Only some. So he suspected that Tyrells, that the Tyrells would kill Joffrey. And thought, but you second guess yourself. You said maybe it'd be too poetic for Still Game of Thrones. <laughs> then you predicted at the beginning of one of the episodes that Littlefinger is Joffrey's killer. I'm pretty smart. So, I mean, you're okay. Then you predicted that Jon Snow will become a leader at the Night's Watch. I think I always felt that, though. He always gave those vibes, didn't he? Are you going to give it a commentary on every single one of my points or just acknowledge my brilliance? 
every point you put, you spend my point and gone yeah but like just say my predictions <laughs> anyways <laughs> then he thought ben jen would appear again in the future as a white walker he wasn't so that's wrong he was a white but i think he was half white honestly i think i meant white because i would have said white walkers but i didn't know the term white i never right. thought he was going to become the ones with the white hair even then you're wrong because he was half no i'm correct <laughs> So he then predicted that the White Walkers converted the babies. That, um, what's his name? Uh, Crayster. Yeah, that Crayster was giving the White Walkers. Yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed with my list here. <laughs> you said that John was a man of duty. I mean, I think we all saw that. Saw more, more than a man of love. Yeah. And I said that I think that would save him in the end. Which yeah. he kind of did. It actually kind of did that he chose duty over love with Danny. So, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm being honest. Like, I don't remember the half of these, so I'm just thinking. Yeah. And Spartan said the Hound will join the Brotherhood without Batman. I don't remember that either, but I'll take it. Mad. <laughs> no, I'll read out Pudgies, and I'll be the first to say that I think it was probably hard to get all of hers. I don't doubt that she had some better ones than me, probably more. We've got some on the list here, but again, there's probably a lot we couldn't capture, guys. We just got a small summary of, of some of ours. So you said after seeing Joffrey mock Jamie in front of the Kingsguard book, you predicted that Jamie would redeem himself and have something positive written in there about him. I actually really, really loved that scene. That was a really good idea. That was idea. really done well. You predicted that Sir Dantos was somehow involved with the ploy of, of Sansa and Joffrey dying and, and everything that transpired in, down there. Yeah. Yeah, because you always felt it was a bit sus that he was just gave her the necklace. You didn't trust him at the beginning. Yeah, I didn't trust him. You were, you were too, like, trusting in that, I think. You said... Arya being a secret copy out of Tywin was foreshadowing her learning to be a good liar and pretending to be someone else. I think Which that's a good is one. crazy. Faceless man. Yeah, it's pretty good. You predicted that using the Faith Militant to arrest Loras keeps Cersei's hands clean from blame. It's a good pickup. I don't know if that's a prediction or like an understanding of the story. but Yeah, I think more understanding of the story. But there were quite a few other things. Do you have any other ones that you remember specifically about yourself? Um. Because I feel like that list... Not taking away from our mods, but I feel like that at least doesn't, doesn't do justice to some of your predictions. Yeah. Well, you predicted they couldn't have known this at the time, but you predicted Bran. I predicted Bran. That was That's a, a big huge one. one. That's a big one. I predicted... Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say that I predicted the two houses, House Dark and House Targaryen. I don't know if you can call it a prediction. Well, because you couldn't submit loyalty to any house. You didn't predict shit. <laughs> nah, that one doesn't count. Um, I had some really good predictions. I just don't remember them. If some of you guys can remember some of Pudgy's top predictions. And Spartans. And mine, yeah. But let us know in the comments if you remember any of that ones that you at the time you couldn't say and then you're like, holy shit, oh. I always thought this was pretty impressive that you guys said this. Let us know. I know there's definitely some better ones out there, but it's obviously a big job to go out it is. to all the reactions we've done and, and capture every word. So this so, is... Some that stuck with you guys and you're like, what the hell? How did these people even get that? Yeah. Otherwise, this is just a little bit of a trip down memory lane. Yes. Some of the things we said when we were still sweet summer children. Sweet summer children. I think one that stands out for me that you got wrong was Locke. You trusted Locke like no tomorrow, the man that cut Jamie's hand off. Yeah, I mean, if we're going into... Th this list is honestly only some of the ones we got right. We probably... If we had more time, we could have collated maybe some of the ones that we got wrong. I mean, we thought Rob was going to avenge Ned. We thought Oberyn was going to be... Like, dominate the mountain and, yeah. and come back alive. There were so many. There's Even... You guys, let us know which ones that we actually got way wrong. Yeah, there were definitely... I mean, there's millions in this, isn't there? So, there's no shortage of it. <laughs> guys... This is a different video and it's going to probably be quite big, but we hope you've enjoyed a bit of a trip down memory lane, a bit of a deep dive in our thoughts and just hopefully sending off this monumental Epic. journey in our channel's history and in our community and even just as a, as, a, as a show and story of itself, giving it the right send off, a bit of closure. As I said, we could make a 20-hour video dissecting everything in Game of Thrones. So there was never the intention here, but it was just a bit of a deep dive, a summary, a wrap up of our final thoughts as we depart from this awesome series. And we just want to say a big thank you to the entire community, all our moderators for making sure we don't get spoiled. And all our viewers. All our viewers for giving so much love on all the videos. Yeah. Whether you're a silent viewer, someone who liked and subscribed and commented on all our videos, 
Patreon supporter, every single person goes a long way, made this really fun and special for us and we've enjoyed Very it. Very special. So we appreciate you guys a lot. Yeah, definitely means the world to us, I think. I think that journey, just an already 10 out of 10 journey or 9.5 journey, <laughs> got enhanced even further by being able to share it with so many of you guys, being able to deep dive into the comments. We got way more out of the law than we would of ourselves by for being sure. able to have some of the gaps covered and you know, diving into the histories and lore and having some book pieces extended and all that was just awesome for us. Yeah. So, And thank you for those who joined us with the histories and lore. <laughs> yes, to those of you who enjoy those. And thanks for everyone who didn't watch it for being patient with us. <laughs> yeah. If you enjoyed this different style of video, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel to join us for many future series and movies that we'll be covering on the channel and let us know in the comments down below Anything, any fun thoughts on Game of Thrones, anything you wanted to cover from this video or any burning thoughts, it's your last chance to get them out there. We'll be yep. reading those. And don't forget to let us know what predictions we got right and what we got wrong that really stuck with you guys now that we can finally read them. <laughs> yep. And we will be moving on to Breaking Bad following Game of Thrones. We are excited to start a very different and new journey. So if you're interested in that, join us along there. And if you're not, Stay tuned because we're also going to be covering a variety of movies soon. We're excited to start those. We're also covering Legend of Korra on the anime side of things. So the variety is constantly growing. The channel is constantly evolving. We've also had our first live streams come up. So feel free to join in some of those as well and say hello and have a chat and hang out. We look forward to seeing you guys some way, shape or form. If you were just a Game of Thrones journey, then we hope you guys enjoyed as much as we did. Take care of yourselves and we'll see many of you on one of our next reactions. See you guys.